Welcome back, friends, to Occultus Anonymous, sponsored by Roll20, the Onyx Path, and viewers like you. Thank you all so much. Um, YouTube folks, you might notice that this episode is a little bit on the shorter side. Uh, we had some technical difficulties uh, getting everything up and running. Uh, <laughs> ignore any jokes, giggling, or uh, other commentary from the peanut gallery. Uh, we had all this time, and I didn't ever pull Patreon up. Um, <laughs> so we like to remind you we are professionals at what we do. Te technically, these people pay us for this bullshit. <laughs> Thank you to uh, number one skeleton, Adele, Al, Alan, Michael, Alexander, an irresponsible use of money, Ang Fallen, Bernie, <laughs> Blood Angel, Brandon, Chris, Daniel, Doc the Undead, Delore, Emil, Funzosu Rali, George, Jack, Jenny, John, Josh, Julian, Cat Feathers, Crazy Man, seventeen seventy two, Melissa, Michael, Milo V three, Moku, Neo Magus, Noba, Other Michael, Parker, Perry, Puppeteer, Riafio, Ryan, Shaksara, Sina, Terran, the Arcane, Thomas, Toast, Usuf, Sama, Vortex, Woodsalm, and Zoltan. Thank you all very much. Uh, and it's up to you to figure out uh, which was which between Camo and Noctal with those ridiculous Patreon names. Um, Holy moly. Um, Holy moly. By the way, uh, y'all that are watching on Twitch, if you have Amazon Prime, if you <laughs> want to use your Amazon Prime, if you want to reach, you grab your little fingers deep down into Jeff Bezos' pocket and give us a couple dollars. Come on now. Yeah. It's better than just letting it sit there if you don't have any other channels you like to give it to. Come on. Yeah. Look it up with a subscription. <laughs> Time for another dumb name gimmick. It's never time for another dumb gate name gimmick. Please let it all end. <laughs> Just stop picking on me. Okay, it, we. It, this is going to be. <laughs> this is going to be an episode, gang. Uh, yes, and also besides the technical difficulties, you may notice the black square over there. Uh, Craig is not currently with us. Uh, He's no longer with us. Oh, for we're hanging right now. Uh, <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> for today. Uh, Yes, uh, Craig is Craig is getting the 5G upgrade. Uh, so yes, uh, Craig may join us at the end. Uh, we'll see how he is feeling, but no pressure because this is shot number two. And if you've gotten your vaccination, shot number two, it it hit different. It sucks. So to be hitting different. Uh, yep. Uh, so we pick up inside the collapsed mine. Uh, oh, yeah. Mine uh, mine number one, tunnel number three of. Uh, uh, the end right mines, uh, wherein a tunnel collapse has blocked off three miners, well, three people. Um, uh, you all at this point actually know one of them is Warner and right. Um, and, uh, they mm, are blocked. No? no, Mortimer. Thank you. Yes. Mortimer Bethune, um, is, uh, locked in there and there are two other miners. Uh, you only know that primarily because they haven't even finished doing the head count. Uh, but because of uh, uh, Isabel's <laughs> spell, um, know that, oh yes, there's uh, three bodies in there. One of whom uh, is actually trapped beneath some rubble. Uh, already, uh, uh, Cloak, excuse me, Jean-Paul, um, and, uh, uh, oh my gosh, hang on. Nope, I need Kanka. CJ. Oh, Sunny Day, Missy J. Sunny Day, Missy J. Damn it! Uh, I have I have so many names. Um, are at work and um, using basically gifts of the cult, for lack of a better way to put it, are just heaving rocks. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, a obscene number of like, like 16, uh, quills, successes, or something. It yeah. was a fourteen. Lot. Got 14. Oh, right, because you had to roll the couple extra. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and just hauling rocks down, which initially is absolutely phenomenal. And they're clearing out a lot of the stuff towards the top. Uh, but then as stuff starts to shift and move, um, things have to slow down a little bit because instead of just throwing rocks off, it needs to be a little bit more careful and stuff like that. Um, I, I was actually thinking this over. I'm like, a lot of successes, but a lot of that is strength stem. That's the sheer, like, for me, it's the endurance thing. And I think mm -hmm. that's what uh, you had mentioned, Ralph, was kind of what that vibe was. The strength plus stamina roll, if I remember correctly, is just the sheer, like, moving rocks kind of roll. Yeah, they're also quite capable at precise demonstrations of strength. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keeping in line with the merit 
mm-hmm. being you can do cool things like break stuff effectively and quickly and so gotcha okay um, but yeah yeah so they're just using moving rocks as part of their training right right so they're just executing right by rote just yep. another day yeah yep exactly well we're here for this in, in this case a little bit a little bit different uh notably sure. because they do know that there is somebody else underneath yeah uh, we got to be careful once we get to the point that it seems like the the rocks were on if we're standing on rocks that aren't going to be supported like if stuff moves around we want right. to slow down right and especially not having an idea of the rocks towards the other side uh now, that's fortunately, right exactly um theo did uh lean over and kind of touch the rocks and, and was able to give um i think it uh spoke to jean paul about it uh because also did the the lodestone to keep some of the dust yeah. From accumulating, uh, which was such a good move. I wasn't going to give oh, a negative, yeah. but man, I love the narrative to that. Yeah. So at this point, uh, we're going to get um, a number of uh, additional roles. Uh, okay. In this, in this case specifically, what uh, I'm, I'm looking at is uh, flat out um, strength and stamina rolls. Uh, cool. Again, we can we can pile them on. Um, Sweet. The uh, the point that we're at right now just because we don't have any heavy, heavy lifting stuff um, mm-hmm. is like this is just moving tons of dirt and rock uh, and at this point the rest of the cult and some of the other miners who are in the tunnels and stuff like that are literally just moving carts of stuff right. uh, they have some uh, they have some mules or donkeys I don't know which they would use or pulling carts, but they've even pulled in. They're just man handling some carts too, just because wheelbarrow kind of things, right? Just because they need to get this stuff out of the way. And you know, these tunnels are small. You know, these right. are not big, expansive. Yeah. You know, especially now that we're in into the like the active working space. Right. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So go ahead and give me uh, another set I'll of do the roles. same thing I did before. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fine. Uh, and currently cool. what we're looking at is each of these sets of roles is a half hour. Uh, now, very okay. quickly, you're going to be able to whitt- uh, whittle that down because of exceptional successes and reduce Fantastic. the time for next roles and stuff like that. Uh, when we left off, I had um, turned on spirit vision mm-hmm. to look around. Yep. Okay, there's that one. So that's five successes because they get we get each get plus one automatic success if we score at least one success. Okay. Fourth level of strength performance. Okay, cool. So here's the second roll from SCT. And then, great, so six. Super good. So that's 11 dice. Mm-hmm. Cool. And here's Cloak. It's gonna be another ridiculous amount, but Probably. You never know. Never know. That's the that's oh, the RNG <laughs> the algorithm just collectively shits itself. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, we are gonna uh, get back okay. to spirits and then also the outside where uh, uh, Diedrich. Peace out. At least Sad Dad wasn't buried. Hmm. Only eight. That's nine. Only nine successes. Yeah, only nine successes. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I just mean, if you roll 20 while it wrote, you'd expect to get 10. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so exactly that. Uh, so we were at half hour uh, roll. The next one will be progress in 15 minutes. We'll hang on to that as we're working through this basically half hour. Um, cool. And so, yes, whoop, on goes the mage site because uh, you're just using the spirit site. Um, because you had life on to you, uh, specifically, you're not casting uh, Exorcist Eye, you're just doing the mage site, right? Cool. Uh, and so, yes, there are um, rock spirits, um, stone spirits, you know, and uh, the lingering spirit of the mine, um, that lounges here. Um, the mine spirit itself is, um, almost akin to um, a, a minor. Um, there is a... Because we don't even have, like, you know, proper helmets, you know, or anything like that. Um, uh, everybody's... I would imagine, I'm, I'm thinking about it, but most everybody's probably kind of bareheaded. 
um, hmm. in here. Um, and, but has, you know, this big mining pick, um, that looks like serrated edge, nearly scythe-like, um, and, um, is, yeah, human-sized, um, but also looks a little bit, um, a little bit corpulent, um, Mm. and has a very kind of, um, fat, cat nobleman kind of vibe to him even though there's the big oh yeah it's a pickaxe and for working but you know not somebody you would ever expect to actually use that for actual work um and is watching just kind of at a distance not involved with the stuff that's going on nearby um and amongst all the rocks you have you know the the little moats that you know aren't anything um uh but there is one just absolutely greedy um trying to think of yeah yeah basically uh (laughs) craig's not here pain spread uh you know misfort uh and just somebody just gobbling up um not even necessarily pain so much as it is bringing in the emotional stress and yeah yeah uh and just the everybody is anxious and stuff like that um and you know this red bubbly just sticky goo thing that just clings to everything as it kind of rolls over and moves over stuff um and uh yeah, I think just, you know, at that initial turn on the the mage site, that's kind of what you're seeing. If you need a moment, uh, I can jump over outside to pick up with uh, Gisela. Yeah, I'm going to punch up a spell. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, outside Gisela, you've just been embraced by your dad, who is somewhere between wild paranoia and things are out to get him and a little bit of depression and a lot of guilt um uh, you know knowing dad yeah this is the exact kind of thing that even if it's not his fault 100 percent right um and it's just like sobbing against you um i'm trying to remember uh actually let me pull up because i have him here in conga uh, okay yeah we don't have his actual description whoops not dietrich uh, whoops no, you want Friedrich. Yep. Um, how did I say he was? I think he's like 36 or something. Like, he's not really even middle-aged. He's not old. Oh, man. They've they've changed him over. Uh, sorry, uh, Kanka had an update recently to their layout for stuff. Um, and so now story has, like, background and description. The profile has all the attributes. So, yeah, he's 40. Okay, I think I'm the moment. 37, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, uh, specifically, I was thinking about like height and stuff like that. I imagine he's not too much taller than you. Just no. in my head. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah he kinda... looks a lot like haggard. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, to, to <laughs> is missing a finger. Um, yeah, he has been a, a laborer his whole life. Right, and an unlucky one at that. Uh, but yes, you know, cling to you, you know, and it's as um, Furnace is basically doing the head count uh, outside because all the miners from the class were pulled out as a stream of maroons were the ones heading in, uh, which. Fortunately, actually makes it very easy to tell who's who because different skin color. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, okay, these guys out, these guys in, and doing a head count. And, you know, as uh, your dad is speaking with you, uh, Furnace, you know, is you know, calling out names and, you know, Friedrich! And just this, you know, very defeated hand up, I'm over here, boss, kind of, uh, kind of attitude. And, uh, you know, Friedrich kind of turns to Mr. Enright and he's like, okay, we're, we're, we're missing two miners. And Mr. Enright quickly adds, and Mortimer. Mr. Bethune is in there. Um, you know, Furnace, who's already been given not not necessarily a, a dressing down, but so much as a reminder of, hey, 
you you were you were too close to this. You need to step back. We've got this." Uh, when John Paul was heading in, uh, so they're immediately like their faces are just turning, and you hear your dad just sob even more. He's like, "Oh my god." Uh, I, I think he, you know, mine got uh, <laughs> by my little bit of German, uh, and you know, I've, 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 I've killed, I've killed an important man. I've killed a, I've killed a, a scientist. I've killed a, you know, a, a, a learned man. I, you know, and definitely can hear him putting this guy above the miners because oh, he's he's an important person. We're all just a bunch of laborers, kind of stuff, and it's just he's sinking lower. Uh, I am. The best thing for him at this point is going to be, I think, to get him home. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to try to quiet him, comfort him right here. Mm -hmm. And then um, signal to Furnace that we're going home. Sure. Uh, yeah, you. I mean, it, it, it doesn't take much long because you, you, you ran out from the general store. Your mm -hmm. mom is... Not is going to be just a little bit behind. She's probably finding people to take your your siblings, and mm -hmm. then uh, is probably going to be up soon as well. So you have some options there of that. But yeah, furnace is like like is basically at this point telling all the other miners to go home. You can't you can't do anything now. You're all worn out. Some of you are injured. And there are definitely some folks who are holding at broken arms and some other mm -hmm. like more superficial in injuries. Uh, the barber and uh, a couple other experienced folks are wrapping games and stuff like that. And Chris, you got two spells queued up here. What's going on? Um, so the first one is um, I'm actually going to switch them. It'll okay. be one. It'll still be three and four for each. Mm -hmm. um, but the free reach is also swapped. So um, so, one die of Paradox for uh, Exorcist Eye. Okay. With increased scale for yourself and... No, the, this is... I second spell first, oh, but the reach I'm is wrong down. because okay. I'm overreaching because I have spell uh, limits. Oh, right, right. Okay. Um, so, no successes. Okay, and that is two, three... Eight. Five, eight dice. Yep. So close. Cool. Um, okay, so I can see and interact with everything now, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, and then uh, um, was that with advanced duration? Yeah. Okay, that's why I figured. Instant, that. instant advanced duration, and then plus one spell control. Um, the second one is instant advanced duration, advanced scale plus two. So it's actually five overreach on two, on uh, uh, one with one free. So four dice plus one, five, five full paradox die. I will spend, uh, three mana. Okay. Down to two. No successes. Okay. And uh, this is to cap the well. Um, this is, I, Isabel does not want whatever these nasty little bad spirits are. <laughs> they got bad vibes. We don't want them bad vibes. Right. So this is to cap off their essence and hopefully drive them away um, because they're, you know, not but so large. And if they don't get food from here, then they're gonna have to find something else. Yep. So. Wards a uh, source of essence, making it difficult for spirits, but not so a clash of, of wills for them to feed. Gotcha. All right. Uh, oh yeah, we should roll the roll the spell first. Go ahead. Hmm. Uh, and this is with my flute and the cave itself as yantra. Okay. Uh, a, I mean, picking a up a piece of the as the flute. Um, I mean, just an area, right? Like you're. Yeah, like the, uh, specifically, the whole Thyrsus in their natural environment. Uh, specifically, I was thinking getting a rock for a plus two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, to crush it. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'll take an extra die. Sure. Uh, so that's what? Three, six, seven? Yeah. Wait, up here. One. Cool. All you need. Yep. Yep. You succeed. What's that and look like uh, a Mago? This wise? is. Um, 
like discordant music, like Isabel creating and and sending out her her Nimbus like staff um, into and around the scene and just getting in the way of the of the resonance and and blocking off the um the feeding gotcha okay cool spirits that. all right and sorry the um uh because we talked about scale so we're aiming for basically this large area this section yeah right okay like in the cave all right just in case they get you know ideas of being nasty to people to up the you know because spirits have that ability to I mean, influence if, if nothing yeah. else yeah yeah okay cool uh yeah immediately that kind of washes over uh the three of you that are inside the cave including theo uh have two pings of the peripheral mage site um as the spell goes off um and it lingers uh because of the continued shielding effect um, mm-hmm. which is one of the other things I keep forgetting about. It's not necessarily just one ping, but an right. ongoing effect. Um, right. And uh, which also means, uh, well, you already had it from uh, the ongoing effect of Lodestone too, now that I think about it. But, mm-hmm. uh, cool. Uh, and then Cloak is busy uh, just hauling rock. Um, cool. Uh, so yeah, with, uh, with Exorcist Eye, um, the big, heavy, like, mind spirit like has a pretty human face um definitely some disfigured distorted like almost clay face it's kind of the the one one second because i wasn't sure if i was clear the source of resonance that i'm targeting Mm -hmm. is the the negative emotions the actual like everything that belongs here like the the stone and the essence of the mine itself I don't think I'm targeting but I guess with an area I don't know that right I think you would do everything maybe it doesn't work but that okay. said um, uh, that said a big ass spirit of the mine is probably just going to smash through my clutch of right. pretty easily so yeah uh, but notably the big spirit doesn't care like sure because it's 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 sitting in its own resonance it'll munch fed. on one of the little rocks in a second right if it gets yeah, hungry it for a snack. uh but yeah you definitely get the attention of uh the gooey sticky sorry in my head and hi are you new here uh carnage-esque you know thing uh i once i just started describing it i was like yeah it's basically like the carnage mm-hmm. symbiote. This, this black red gooey nasty it just clings to stuff. Spiral. Yes. 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 Um, and it just like <laughs> immediately kind of turns Fucking and Tim Curry. shifts <laughs> and like instead of like clinging and moving into rocks and basically feeding off of whoever is underneath there and having some right. really terrible thoughts just whips around. Well, actually, uh, let's do a uh, Clash of Wills first. Um, which it is going to clash with is it its influence? Shoot. Because uh, I know it's not its power and finesse. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Be whatever it uses to feed, which is somewhere in the werewolf book. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Rank plus influence, I want to say, but I that don't That is kind of what I was that. thinking, too. Um, Seems closer to something I might actually defend against. Right. Because uh, it... I'll go ahead and roll my three. Yeah. Hey, that's a good roll. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Two successes. Hell yeah. Yeah, do that. And Spain's advantages. Blah, 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 blah. Rank Spain's combat. Oh, that's close. Influence. It's somewhere in here. Right, I can't remember, so we're yeah we're rolling with a uh, rank plus influence, um, which is going to be four. Yeah. So yeah, uh, retconning slightly, this thing is you know clutching and grabbing and you know little tendrils reaching down into the rocks, and just I feel like suddenly just hit gets hit you know, we'll lean into the imago this like buzzing yeah. discordant and just kind of rears back and just 
spins, the whole little ooze thing just kind of spiraling up, looking about, and then it's just hauling right towards you. Um, cool. It's, you know, because uh, in my head, Exorcist, I, you know, half puts you into Twilight, which normally, if, you know, for those of you joining us at home, if you're in Twilight, the real world, the material world is kind of grayed out and kind of subdued. Um, and I imagine things like Resonance and Essence really stands out. And all of a sudden, here's Isabel standing bright in full color um, and is going, well, oh, what the hell are you doing? And it starts moving with a quickness um, uh, because spirits are fast um, across the across the ground uh, mm -hmm. towards you. Um, and in, well, yeah, actually starts making these this awful, unintelligible, screeching, screaming. It's definitely a language, but not one you understand. Uh, mm. It's first tongue, but yeah, it it is not happy, and then it's coming towards you. And I think, uh, well, actually, we'll we'll pause there. Uh, actually, no, because it's, uh, it's cloak gets yeah, stabbed, and, and cloak cloak isn't able to see anything. You not can't see, see anything. It. Yeah. Yep. You don't know what's um, happening. Uh, roll initiative, sir. Stab Which uh? Like uh oh, <laughs> stab shit yeah. with a flute. I hadn't oh, thought yeah, about done. it, but absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Um, Christopher uh, said it's gonna be a twelve for me. That Isabel was going to have uh, an object made of Cassidra, and I was like, oh, big big spirits. She's fine. <laughs> Doesn't count as a bane. It's just going to eat up essence, but still, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it hurts. Uh, it's going to hurt, yeah. That just means your lethal damage is more effective because once you do beat it up, mm -hmm. if it's got nothing left in the tank, it just. Oh, you're bashing damage? Gone. Yeah. Well, I mean. But yeah, true. Yep. Yes. Um, cool. Um, uh, are you actually I'm planning on hitting it of essence. with a flute? Probably not. No. Okay, because as you say, if you have if you're using a weapon, I was going to give it a, like a minus one uh, penalty. Um, a baton is a what? minus two. Oh, for initiative. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And if it comes to that, uh, you know, we oh, can that's change fair. it to yeah, see based on their role, because uh, that's how it can combat actually works. Let's see here. So it's going to be rolling. Uh, da, 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 da. Detail. Also, would you have like any idea that your flute would even do that to it? Um, I would figure at this point, having spoken with Ganem a couple times, she probably, knows there's something up with the material. Something's up with it, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure Ganem would not tell exactly what it does because that's one of those like secrets you don't right. let out. But uh, initiative uh, finesse plus resistance. Um, oh boy, um, that's right forgot how many dots a rank two entity has um, a bunch indeed uh oh wait no it's just a flat d10 plus yeah probably going first but uh, maybe not if it's got say 10 dice or 10 dots six. that's a tie uh what's your what's your bonus plus six. Oh, so you're at a 12 and it's got uh mm -hmm. i was putting it at eight so okay yeah. cool um, cool. Uh, yeah, so you have the initiative as it's moving towards you. I mean, you're uh, hop, skip, and a jump away from it. It's, you know, sure. pretty close. Uh, I am going to... Yell at it to go away. Sure. Uh, potency is so there. Oh, we're going to do, a, do it with a spell. Yep. Um, instant. Plus three. I'm going to do sensory or you're going to throw. Ooh, actually, yeah, throwing is probably not the way to do it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, mini reach. Mm -hmm. This is where we find out about paradox actually yep. being real. Fingers crossed. <laughs> We have three spells. Plus, we've invoked Paradox twice. 
This will be. This is gonna be a hell of a pool. How much mana you got? Enough. Okay. You sure? Twenty. There. I Chris haven't is, spent that much. Yeah, Chris has been been through. I'm not scared of paradox. Not yet. To buy Isabel. All right, guys, hang on. <laughs> Uh, no, it's a hungry we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna spend another willpower. <laughs> okay, um, so that reach is going to be instant sensory three for existing spells. Hey, do I have to have duration, or does it actually do the? Uh, oh, yeah. you're doing command spirit. Yeah. Oh yeah, it does factor in duration. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's make it six then. <laughs> okay. So. So five plus two is seven dice of paradox. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna spend three. Okay, down to four paradox dice. Uh, what yantra are you using? The flute. So that's gonna reduce it by two. Isn't the flute your dedicated magical tool? Not yet. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we did mention that. Appreciate your plan, um, fair. Does it? It may count as maybe an extra yantra, uh, or as like a plus to, one. Are you gonna spend two turns to use it? No, no, no. Uh, as a better yantra, though, if you count uh, this as a summoning, oh. it's like the opposite of a summoning, right? I'm, I, I, I dig that. I'm, I'm okay, okay with that. Maybe not in, in all contexts of command spirit, but certainly in this one, like controlling where a spirit is going, I could see that. Yep. So a plus two and nine again. Mm -hmm. Um, which, and I'm gonna spend the willpower. And uh, I do have to simple. control this. Okay, so take the bashing. And nine again, that's gonna be five dice. Six dice. One more Yantra plus three. Oh, right, because you spend the willpower, right? Here. Two successes. Two successes. Cool. And it's just, it is just pointing the flute out and go away. Cool. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a couple like looks over at you from some of the other miners. Like there's the one guy who is vaguely in line right. that you're, and it's like, oh, fuck you, I'm working. <laughs> you know, like you, you get right, a little bit. Just happens to be passing by as I do this. Right. right. Um, probably walking through the spirit for all right. they know and have, getting right. that bad vibe moment. <laughs> I'm just like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then the spirit kind of slinks back and like definitely looks, but you took the advanced duration. So it's going to mm -hmm. be for at least an hour and just like not pleased. Um, and I think it goes literally back and away. Um, and so you watch it move over the rocks and just like, just keeps going. And we're mm -hmm. going to play like it's turn undead. It has to keep going until it finds right. a wall and then it can spend dodge actions and nothing else. Right cool uh, uh, outside the cave uh, Gisela you're able to kind of pass off dad uh, unless you go with it uh, I was like I mean I don't really want to leave but I was going to walk him home because that <laughs> is the, the best thing to do okay yeah absolutely and yeah uh, and admittedly there's Gisela probably both magically and non-magically, probably there's not much that you can do right now. So, like, I basically said my prayer for the people, mm -hmm. right. gave, gave them a luck, and I'm going to take care of family now. Gotcha. Cool. And also, I am still pretty beat up. I was looking at wounds. If I'm at a lethal, and then I take two more bashing, are those also still lethal? No. no. You get okay. bashing to the right of your lethal. Okay, I didn't know because I know like in some things when you hit one, it rolls over and then all your other damages are on that track. Right. Now. So basically, if you're you have no place to put a bashing wound because it's all filled up, you have to upgrade an existing upgrade thing, starting at your lowest stuff. So your bashing start to become lethal, uh, mm -hmm. which is where it gets scary because all of a sudden that bashing wound that you didn't care about now just became a resistant lethal wound. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm fine. I do have one lethal two bashing. Yep. But yeah, still <laughs> kind of banged up. Um, Doesn't the lethal get pushed down the track too as you take bashing? Um, 
No, because the lethal is going to be over on your left. And heavier wounds stay to the bottom of the to the left of the track. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because you basically you'd have your bashing. And it's like, oh no, I got a lethal. Okay, cross it and add a bashing. Mm-hmm. Of course, I might be doing that backwards, but yeah, you're you're correct. Uh, Unless you just meant directionally. Right. Just your hands. Uh, which uh, with um, we'll cut back to uh, uh, Isabel here momentarily. Um, but cloak, you've started to you know get stuff moving. I uh, imagine you're going to put your exceptional success towards reducing the time needed on the next one down to 15 minutes. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so yeah, um, go ahead and uh, throw another set of dice um, real quick. All right, let's do it. Do them triples. Yep. Working together. Uh, and uh, while you're working on that, Team success. your um, life site, or did you have, you had life web up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you are, I'm, I'm kind of tying that into, um, and I meant to bring it up and we'll actually talk more when Craig gets back, um, but I had a thought about sensory range stuff and realized that having abilities to sense, say, living things nearby, that mm-hmm. makes them part of the sensory range and not necessarily right. needing to see them and stuff like that. We'll talk right. about that. Nine successes, heck yeah. So 15 minutes goes by and making so much more progress. You guys have got to lead on this and stuff like that, which is good because um, uh, Isabel, um, whether or not you share it with Jean-Paul or not, but um, whoever is buried beneath the the rocks uh, to borrow the kind of typical video game kind of vibe has gone from green to yellow um, Uh. in the fact that, yeah. uh, So whatever collapse may have happened was not just they're buried so much as they are wounded and are definitely like suffering some stuff, which actually reminds me. Let me pull this up real quick. Da 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 da. Combat. Can I see with my sight again? Say that one more time. So, what can I see with life sight again? Uh, you can actually see legitimately health bars. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, where is this? Uh, upgrading damage. Um, right. Um, and the actually, yeah. Um, go ahead and just for knowledge sake, and we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna dig up ye oldie thing. Uh, roll me a. Um, Wits plus medicine, or wits plus life, depending on what you've got. Uh, I have one dot of each of those things. Okay. Uh, and to basically try and gauge what exactly you're looking at, in terms of how badly they are. Uh, sure. One success. All right. So yeah, it gives you gauging how how injured they are. Um, yeah, at this point you can confirm whoever this is has basically their box full of lethal. And so now every minute starts. That's yellow to you? Well, fair. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah. <laughs> that's like that's like fucking Call of Duty full yeah, full the, red. The you got, you got yeah. one last <laughs> shot left to get your your right. stand back up. Yep. Uh, I was down there taking aggravated. Yep. Um, which, uh, for those of you at home, uh, and trying to keep up, uh, when you're full on lethal, you start taking an aggravated wound every minute. Uh, and when you are absolutely full of aggravated damage, you are dead. Permanently dead. Yep. You know, well, you know, real, permanently real is, not uh, great shape. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean look, if we want to talk about magic, we talk about magic. Theo. Um, Isabel would calmly sort of make her way back over close to Jean-Paul and I know you are working at a pace that is honestly impressive, but whoever is under here is running out of time very quickly. Jean-Paul's face is coated in sweat, not dust. (laughs) Thanks to Theo. (laughs) And in a sidelong grateful glance at Isabel says from the side of his mouth, if there's anything you can do to give me more time, we'll take it 
I'm going to try something. And I will turn to the mind spirit. And yeah, with basically just like, I don't like not with doing it with a spell, but I'm seeing it from the um, from the sympathetic merit that we've talked about. Oh. <laughs> um, basically just opening up herself and just being like, you don't, you can't possibly want these people dead in your mind. The things that that would do to your resonance, to your food. Please help us save this person. Okay, so, uh, because I want to get this right narratively, uh, do you go over to the spirit? Okay, because uh, the initial thought was you had talked to Jean-Paul and then turned around to, and this spirit is, you know, a ways away. Right. But okay, yeah, you kind of wander into the into the dark a little bit and speak with this thing. Um, and, like, y'all bring it, because I... I I don't do voices, uh, but you know, think of your, you know, bubbling, you know, absolutely gross, you know, wine dripping down the chin, you know, kind of, you know, uh, stereotype glutton kind of thing and kind of looks at you and, you know, getting closer. This thing is, you know, eight, nine feet tall, but like, which shouldn't be because the mind definitely isn't that big right. but it's it's mine and it can do right. whatever the hell it wants kind glide of. through the rock and shit like that right yeah. and kind of looks down and there's a there's a tinge of a uh you know englishman's accent um and uh kind of looks over towards the rubble where everybody is you know a bunch of ants just moving 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 uh, and it says, what is one more, you know, dead? Uh, I, I think it probably even says, you know, human. Uh, this mine, their greed will keep them coming back regardless of how many die. But you already saw that I drove off the others. The mix... The grief. Would that not tamper your food source? Pollute your waters? Uh, yeah, let's roll a uh, presence plus something. Um, I think this might be flat out presence plus persuasion. Just like, hey. Just presence or manipulation? Um, Uh, Could you resolve the... Condition. Well, do you have to get a bonus on this? What do I have? You have charmed and inspired. Oh yeah, that's right. The ones for oh. one of the things for charmed is you may invoke this. Or it says charmed is, gives you that. Meet lucky someone break. whose acquaintance will be valuable later. Guarantee she's the one who gets a short straw. Help her win an important game of chance. You may invoke this just to fade any time as a reflection, reflexive action. And it says you don't know what effect it'll have, but something good. Um, and inspired is succeed or exceptional um, success. Right? Everything up. Yeah. I yeah. Here. I want to. I want to catch that in. Okay. Um, do you have to do so beforehand? I it believe says, so. When your character takes an action pertaining to that inspiration, you may resolve this. An exceptional success requires only three successes okay. instead of five, so and you gain a point right. of full power. Yeah. Oh, okay. You so don't auto succeed. Afterwards. Right. That's not what it does. I keep burning through this willpower. Oh, I'm thinking of the inf- uh, informed. Yes. Is it informed? Wait, you'll yeah. get the willpower back. And oh, you well, get that's three. Helpful. Well, just the one. Uh, just the one. But cool. Uh, but beat spent or not beat condition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't get beats for this, yeah. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, one is all uh, I was looking for uh, very specifically because there's a lot of laziness. It just needs a little bit of mm-hmm. incentive to just, hey, 
do something, man. Um, and so it m- stomps its way slowly over um, as, uh, you know, kind of brushing by you rather brusquely uh, yeah rather brusquely and uh, you know it's enough to you know kind of bump you uh, against the wall and you, some like, sort of slap of a big old belly yeah 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 a little bit a little bit of oil kind of smear and it's just like ugh. um and it stomps towards the uh uh the pile um and you can see um as it lays hands on the back of Cloak, John Paul. Um, and, uh, well, I'm not even going to roll because it's narrative and I don't give a damn. Um, as uh, basically, Cloak, you feel like trying to think within the narrative and the time frame, uh, but in short, X-ray vision. Um, like this kind of view into the rock and seeing it at multiple depths and stuff like that and all of a sudden it's like oh hang on i don't even need to bother with these rocks they're just going to sit there i can just move this direction um and so we're going to reduce uh your uh stuff down to minutes per roll or excellent a minute per roll rather um so yes Time is of the essence. Please get this guy out. And you are now empowered to make it. Well, you're now. It's now possible. Should As, I roll again? Uh, yes, please. Um, and yeah, uh, in the meantime, uh, Isabel, you are able to see this thing just like fingers gripping Cloak's shoulders effectively. Um, I imagine there's a sensation to cloak that is not this very clearly not the same as being mounted by your Loa, but there's something there. That Similar, feels, but different. Yeah. It's certainly an active magical effect. So it certainly would ping your mm-hmm. Absolutely. peripheral mage site. And successes. There you go. Cool. 11, right? Cause you get plus one. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Exactly. And so, uh, and this is where this gets dumb. And I, once I started doing the math, I realized what it was. So next roll, 30 seconds. <laughs> unless you're, you want to use the exceptional success to lower... So what's the other thing you can do? Um, oh. Threshold. Say that again? I think like a remaining threshold, right? Right, I think so. That's true. Uh, which I don't think would apply to this, because one way or another, you have to get through them. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, at this point, roll again. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, cool. And uh, as you're rolling and as you're clearing rock, and peop- there, are, there are definitely some of the other miners who are watching. And as Cloak is moving like a machine, like mm-hmm. rocks are just being like palmed just and like thrown and thrown. Right. Uh, nearly another seven. Uh, so again, another thirty seconds and just heaving um and uh i'm gonna go ahead and tell you ahead of time the badass performance and stuff like that you're probably going to end up with a condition at the end of this of being just utterly exhausted Mm -hmm. um but for the moment adrenaline plus this weird magical influence plus probably being just in the fucking zone don't feel a thing um cool um as another 30 seconds moves by rocks are just falling to your feet and you're just digging a tunnel there are some rocks that at this point you've looked up and like oh those are kind of resting on each other and you have a tunnel within this debris uh, and it's, you've got that kind of keystone arch overhead it's like no just nobody touch it <laughs> as you're just hauling through this stuff um, and there's definitely some some comments from some of the other members of the cult uh, probably Theo uh, who are like uh, oh, and uh, actually yeah I'm going to go ahead because I know Theo had the spell up to look at this stuff is like no it's it's stable it's 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 okay uh just be careful what you're doing kind of vibes and you can hear groans of uh of a man uh beneath the rubble um and go ahead and give me another set of rolls at this point i'm pretty sure this is kind of a done deal but we'll just go ahead and do it sunny day come on
Cool. Yeah, no problem. At this point, you haven't completely pulled all the rocks off, um, but you can't. Whoop, hang on, Conca, where are you at? Um, uh, I don't know how much Cloak has uh, spoken with them, uh, but you can see uh, Arthur Cole, um, younger guy, probably like probably 18, 19, uh, one of the kids from the farms, basically, who's who's come in here and like is is, I mean, pinned beneath rocks still. But like you get the stuff off of the face and it's. You know, there's it's bloody. It's you know we're not gonna go too heavily, but definitely has been under a bunch of rocks, and kind of thready voice and stuff like that. But what? Did you hear me? Oh my god, heavy, so heavy. Uh, and I'm not gonna have you keep rolling because at this point you've got there. Um, got uh, yeah. The performance part of it is done. Um, uh, time increments reduced by one quarter. Thank you, Noctal. Uh, so yeah, we were even faster, uh, but whatever. Yeah, you know, um, and yeah, he's he's not looking great, um, but you're immediately able to start pulling the rocks directly off of him and stuff like that and passing them through. There's some more digging you're gonna have to do um, to get to the, uh, the other miner and now knowing that this is Arthur Mortimer, um, but now like things slow down and you actually feel this probably lurch uh isabel you can see as the hands come come off and this scythe-esque mining pick is just stamped into and just set in the rubble and it just kind of walks back towards you and like you get like this haughty puff sniff of you know disdain and then back over to the little spot of rock as it just kind of leans back uh, like its job is done, whatever. There, um, and admittedly, as like he is being unearthed, um, some of the other little small boats of you know despair um, are just kind of falling away. Uh, there's a little bit of hope moats that are coming up, but, right? Um, and uh, yeah, um, from there, as things are kind of coming up. Uh, we're going to jump back over to uh, the Bower home uh, mm-hmm. where uh, Antonia and uh, Gisela have gotten, gotten dad home. Um, and uh, Antonia is, you know, again, similar to you, is used to this um, and is trying to get, uh, you know, is doing the reassuring thing on one side of him, you're on the other side, while also looking over him and trying to work with you to figure out what exactly happened which you have a little bit of information in the fact that there's a collapse but what actually happened with him you don't know um and can you know kind of get him inside yeah i want to get him inside and start like sit him down start trying to calm him down and i do want to start asking him what happened we were it's not my fault. Took Mortimer Bethune down into the mines. Uh, we were there with Furnace and... Uh, well, excuse me. Furnace brought him down um, and came by, passed the, heading down to the mine head. I can't remember the end. The end of the tunnel. And they got past me and uh, Furnace left and and told me you know keep an eye on him I said yes sir I looked over at him and then it all came down did you notice anything what was he doing speaking with Arthur and and somebody else I, I, I couldn't see there he was just talking with them and uh, examining some of the support beams uh, that they were putting up. And then then it all collapsed. There was... There was no explosion. It was just like the supports gave out. 
it didn't even collapse at the supports, it just fell. The, the whole roof just fell. Right onto Arthur. I don't think this is your fault. Well, I didn't do it. But I they did. I don't think they did. Because Arthur is no one to you. It's a, it's a good kid. Comparatively. <laughs> But yes, in general, the bad things that have happened to you happen to you and to us. Not to other people who are around. Possibly Arthur has something like this on him also, but I don't think this was you. Um, I'm going to go back up the hill so yeah he he kind of settles a little bit go ahead and do a um, I think this is yeah presence plus uh... hi Ro hello welcome back Persuasion why do I have uh, all the problems like I said somebody cast a fake compelling spell on me. yeah you're not having a good day you have the curse today. Uh, cool. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, Persuasion or empathy? Uh, I think empathy is probably uh, a good way to do it, especially trying to get through to him um, mm -hmm. and remind him. Yeah. <sighs> that whole, I know what you're thinking, but remember, <laughs> yes, we're cursed. Curse gets us. This is my last willpower, but otherwise I'm only rolling two dice, so. One success. There we go, where'd you get that at? On the back three. <laughs> yeah. Yep, needed. Uh, but yeah, he kind of stops and like, compared to his like his bad days where you just can't get him out, like the, the very simple logic of, dad, nothing happened to you this isn't you, this isn't you. This isn't the curse. This is this is something else. Um, he kind of like shifts from that, like hunched forward, elbows on his knees. He's got some scrapes and stuff because he was next to the collapse. But yeah, um, and kind of lifts his head and kind of looks up at you. And it's it's a very like skeletal grin, if if that makes sense. Is you know humorless, and it's just like. Yeah. And kind of like sits back a little bit and kind of touches himself, touches, touches his finger, right? And goes, I am fine. Nothing happened to me. I was, I was just nearby. Mm -hmm. Kind of reassuring himself, reminding himself of, yes, we are a cursed family and our curse sucks, but this- But sometimes bad things happen to other people. Right. Kind of not. Okay. Okay, I- Mom can take care of you. Help clean up any of these the scratches and all he does have. Oh yeah, he's yeah he's he's definitely banged up. Some mm -hmm. some good bruises. Uh, I am going to go back and see if there's anything I can do to help out there. You rest. Kind of kind of pat you know pats your side and says, "You're you're you're a good daughter. I'm proud of you. Go go yeah." Um, and you know, and, and kind of shoes Antonio away. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll, you know, you know, find me the gauze. 
you know, I can I can do some of this myself and like is starting to very quickly rouse up and is like, okay, right, hang on. <laughs> this wasn't actually me. So other people need help. And I, your your comment of I'm going to go do stuff. He's like, okay, I can I can take care of myself. Um, and starts to, you know, kind of come out of his funk. Um, and yeah. yeah. And I'm going to start heading back up a little towards the mine because I'm very curious to get a look at it. Because what he's describing is strange. Very weird. Very weird. Um, cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you uh, start heading up your, uh, that way. It's going to be, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I also uh, figured I would actually take a walking stick to help deal with the screwed up leg I've got going on right now. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, but, uh, yeah, up within the mine, uh, Theo kind of is drawing back um, as as the scene shifts a little bit and we have Arthur being carefully like coaxed out of the fairly small tunnel that Cloak has like burrowed into um, and they're moving him out and there's whimpering and sobbing and you know crying as because yeah he's he is beat all to hell uh, um, and, yeah at least for any sort of like obvious bleeding Isabel would want to try and help that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, you can definitely get in. Um, yeah, uh, feel free to go ahead and roll. Um, uh, but basically, they're moving him out and getting him onto the stone, which is not exactly super comfortable, but it's fairly flat-ish um, as uh, somebody's bringing a stretcher down. Um, cool. And that's uh, what, what specifically are you rolling on that? Uh, intelligence plus medicine. Cool. Yeah, uh, just like and so, ripping yeah, off a sleeve. Well, specifically the going straight into the like life saving stuff. It's like okay, right. broken arm. Not worried about that. Right. You know, whereas you know, um, and yeah, definitely with two successes, no problem finding any of the like really nasty stuff. And right. you know, basically staunching for me, like removing that last right. lethal you know, out of that spot. So he's not continuing to take aggravated damage. He's definitely going to be laid out for, right. I think months. I'm aggravated damage. Depend- come- yeah, there's four it's days. Dead. Or who's going there? Oops, other direction. He has seven health boxes. How uh, much total damage does he have? Um, not quite sure, but yeah, uh, at this point, how quick you got there uh he's got at least three points of aggravated damage so yeah so three weeks i mean at least yeah three weeks plus some mm-hmm. uh but uh seems about right yep uh and he uh but yeah like i said you do that immediate like you are not going to die here <laughs> kind of like staunching right. wounds uh i imagine uh jean paul once it's like okay kid is out Gotta get, get the, the rest out. There are two more to say. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too worried about uh, rolling those because he was the time sensitive one at this point. Uh, Jean Paul could probably even like step back and be like, okay, I really need to take a breather because I just <laughs> hauled like a ton of stone, like a the machine. A literal ton. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, the rest of the crew are in there kind of de, you know, kind of carefully collapsing the tunnel that you dug in. Um, and uh, Theo, like having seen Arthur, like recovered, kind of draws back a little bit. It's like, okay, the person who is trapped is there. You guys have this and kind of draws back. And I don't know what Theo goes and does, but that's for Craig to chat with us. I know Craig has a giant underlined aspiration. So if Craig is able to join us. Uh, He's here. Oh, um, what what timing? Um, probably go actually, on a break real fast. This is, this is perfect. Good amount, um, right? What was that, Chris? Probably want to go on a little break real quick. Right, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Watch this. Boom! I pressed the five-person one. Hi, uh, Craig. I, did I break it? Why is the five-person one... Oh, that's weird. Hi, Craig. You're live. What is going on? There we are. Oh, these are... So, Yay! Heck yeah! Got your 5G upgrade. Um, huh. So I definitely broke some stuff a little bit. 
Mr. Colt is removed uh, from the mine, uh, collapse, and oh yes, so uh, we jump over to Theo, who has a moment to kind of sit back and go, who em- immediate emergency has passed over uh, and just weirdly was really quiet during all that scene, so I don't know. She's doing things. The um, monitoring. Yeah, and um, uh, just there to support and help out in any way I can. I did my initial stuff in the beginning. Did the lodestone to keep the dust away right. from the workers doing the unburying. Mm-hmm. And then as long as there's no other immediate stuff, I'll just fade in the back and help out as as I can. Okay, cool. Mm. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of what I thought um, uh, I had mentioned previously that, you know, actually we brought up the lodestone, but also the fact that uh, because you had that like checking out the rocks kind of thing going on, uh, we're, you know, checking in on the stability of, uh, of the tunnel that uh, Cloak was effectively digging. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, in that case, uh, we kind of roll forward a little bit as uh, a couple of the uh, uh, the maroons, uh, because that's how everybody views them. I got to stop calling them the cult. Uh, they are, but also not. Um, pick up, uh, oh my God, Arthur. <laughs> Yep. And uh, and uh, carry him out towards the um, the exterior of the mine and out towards. Uh, make sure I get the right name. Oh, no. Characters. Where's sure, the barber? The barber. Right. Where's the barber? What was that, Ash? Is his name George? Mm. Uh, I'm trying to find. That sounds like it could be right. It's Matt Vive is the family. Uh, yeah, Sir uh, uh, Grigori, remember? Okay, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, Grigori. Right? Oh, yes. that's right. We were joking about the Seer Cinema. Yeah. Um, so, yes, uh, Grigori and Tobias, who are outside and have put together some, some very rudimentary surgery. Um, and uh, there's a couple couple folks, uh, some women with some midwifing experience and stuff like that. More or less the the town's go-to EMS squad. Uh, right. when, when stuff happens, these are the folks who um, who show up. Uh, which actually, I uh, come back to, to Isabel, and I know, Chris, this is not your favorite thing, but is this something that Isabel gets involved in regularly, or? Nope. Okay. This is very much a showing her hand sort of thing. Gotcha. Is she going to basically move with Arthur and get involved? Or I think she moves with, she has to move and like do that immediate life saving stuff as he's being put on the stretcher and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And so she gets dragged into it. Okay. Cool. And, and does she just, so she stays in there effectively, air quotes, the medical tent? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, definitely some, uh, some, hands-on learning and just being another, I mean, let's be honest, considering the time, you know, it's it's Tobias and Gregory who are doing right. the bossing order stuff and the other uh, women who are uh, acting as uh, as nurses, basically. And, More uh, or less, yeah. Right. And Zuzana is uh, uh, Tobias's wife, um, Gregory's mm. daughter, and she's also there working as, uh, as basically a, a nurse as well. Um, and so there's this little little group of, of women who kind of know what's going on and are, you know, like good trained nurses are kind of offering things ahead of time and stuff like that. But this is this is frontier, not quite meatball surgery, uh, but it is, you know, it is uh, that said, for the most part, he's got broken, you know, uh, right. and Everything. bruised body uh, as opposed to like crushed instead of cut. Right. Uh, and so a lot of a lot of work that goes into that. We don't need to get into that. We're not. This isn't a gory thing. Uh, that, that's, that's not our, our. That's not our show. Uh, but yeah, they start to work at that. And yeah, <laughs> Isabel is just kind of swept into this. Uh, inside the tunnel, uh, uh, Jean Paul takes a break or is is pushing on. Pushing on. Okay. Because uh, yep. you know it's definitely one of the things Oof. that you could have uh, passed on. But yeah, I, I, I yeah, think no. that. 
yeah, uh, until the job is done. Uh, exactly. Let, let's be honest. There's something very, and I hadn't thought about this until I was doing my prep. I was like, there is something very mastigos about. There is a boundary here. Fuck yeah. this thing. <laughs> uh, Stupid me right. robot won't cooperate. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, bringing the wall down very slowly. And as Theo had mentioned, there's a lot of rock here. Um, and so, yeah, especially as that kind of that initial, well, that middle boost that you got from this sensation uh, has kind of faded taking it a little bit slower, a little more carefully, uh, and you're definitely getting farther into this collapse as stuff gets moved out. Um, and eventually you can see a little bit of light uh, coming through some of the rock. And mm. uh, far back from the collapse itself, you can see Mortimer Bethune, who's got one of the, one of the lamps, is holding his arm very close to his side. Um, and then another uh, another miner who's going to go unnamed, um, who are uh, you know basically at that far end, who looks overall dirty and dusty, but seems to have been far enough away uh, from the collapse to not even be injured, um, and is kind of supporting and holding Mortimer close by, because uh, Mortimer at the end of the day is definitely an older gentleman. I'm mm -hmm. pulling up his age again uh, real quick, but he's. 60? It was just 50 or 60, I think you'd said previously. Yeah, 58. Um, so, uh, you know, not not about to fall apart, you know, frail in any regard, but uh, especially within the time frame, any kind of injury gets scary. Yeah, so, makes uh, sense. And, uh, you know, looks up and, you know, the first face the two of them see is, you know, Jean Paul so, pushing over some rubble and mm -hmm. able to see uh, they wait a little bit for everything to kind of collapse and be steadied and then, you know, come over uh, a little bit closer. And Mortimer kind of looks up and definitely looks surprised to see, you know, like I said, of all people, not one of the other miners, not one of the Maroons, mm -hmm. but Jean Paul and Mortimer trying, you know, the British, you know, stiff upper lip kind of thing. Mr. Uh, Mr. Broussard, fancy meeting you busy. here. <laughs> Book puts on the, as people have said, Terminator smile and says, I'm the right person for the job. Sorry, that was really hot coffee. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, and he, he nods and he says, I, I see as he's kind of like looking past you at this, you know, tunnel that you guys have excavated rather than just like pulling stuff off the top have more mm -hmm. or less gone straight through the center yeah. of this thing. Um, and uh, and Cloak follows it up and says, the two women whose hands I made you shake are also equally to thank for saving your life. And I'll leave you to that once we get you out. He nods and, and says, I believe that there will be a lot of thanks I need to give. Um, and then turns to the other miner and says, you go ahead and go first. Um, I would rather there be fewer people to see my indig in indignity as I um, call <clears throat> through this. And so, you know, the other, you, know, you probably have to come out as the other miner comes back in and he, Mortimer kind of looks you up and down and says, and kind of looks at his arm and says, I think you may need to drag me back through this time. I'm happy to. Or, or what was it? I was prepared for that. <laughs> All right. And, you know, kind of, uh, blows out the lantern, sets it down, lets you get in, and yeah, more or less, you have to grab and drag him back through. Um, just I'll tell him to place his arm in a, um, a convenient position such that it's likely less likely to get bumped or um, scraped along mm -hmm. the, the path I'm going to drag him. Right. Yeah, you guys, you take, take a minute to, to get settled in, and yeah, he's, you know, definitely, you know, careful of that and you can definitely see it is it is definitely broken there's you know a little bit of you know uh not great <laughs> going on there oh no his telescope arm <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> now that's 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 what jules is for um uh but yeah you guys you know make a little bit more slow going and mm. get out uh man mortimer you know you know pushes away any mention of a stretcher he's like my my arm is the injured thing i can walk Thank you. Please don't. 
you know, please don't baby me. Um, and then, like, immediately, like, he's got his left hand, so he's not trying to shake anybody's hand, but he's like, and, like, you can definitely see him, like, make a very pointed, like, look at every face, and everything is dimly lit and such, but is like, who all was here? Um, and yeah, you know, uh, the, the maroons, effectively. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of the other miners who have come uh, come in who were not part of first shift, you know, some of the second shift right. and stuff like that. But uh, at this point, it's basically all the maroons plus a few other folks. Um, uh, Isabella at this point is gone. Gisela wasn't there. Theo would be there. Um, and, you know, you know, Mr. Bethune basically adds, he says, I know you all would have done this for anybody trapped in there, but because I was in there, Thank you all very much. If there's anything I can do for you, if anything the Royal Society can do for you all, uh, please let me know and I will see what I can make happen. Um, and there is like sincere gratitude. Uh, you can definitely see on his face and having met the guy, this is the guy who as soon as the collapse happened, did the quick calculus and was like, Yep. How long I'm, do I have to live? <laughs> right. I might just be dying in here. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so the the massive change in fortunes, uh, he he's definitely recognizing. Um, and with that, everybody kind of starts making their way back. Furnace ends up coming in, and you know con- confirms with uh, with Jean Paul, and it's like, okay, how many did we find? Everybody's mm-hmm. counted for. Quick head count. Let's make sure all your men. All well, yeah. Furnace probably says all your men, but. The Maroons all are out and let's just get out of this damn mine. Uh, and uh, as Mortimer and the other miner uh, basically emerge with John Paul and Furnace and stuff like that, there's, you know, the rest of the townsfolk who are trying to help and tend to some of the other injuries and just cleaning people off, buckets of water just to get stuff out of eyes. And there's, there's a bit of a cheer as Furnace he was basically the last man coming out of the cave, uh, cave, the mine. And like, okay, it's all clear. The hip hip hooray. Well, probably not that so much as like half-hearted cheers because a lot of people know like, hey, this could have been so Real much bad. worse. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So you see um, John Paul go over and uh, with, you know, his remaining... Um, will because uh we were in the middle of a scene when we talked about virtue and vice last time oh so yes i think narratively right he's spent all of his willpower and he's going to recover mm-hmm. it after the scene because he leaned on his virtue mm-hmm. so um with like his remaining bill and strength he goes over to make sure the maroons are okay you know yep. and uh i think they're in a group you know just touching base with each other and trying to Hey, hold space for each other because mm-hmm. even though they weren't trapped uh, they know what it's like to feel trapped and to feel at the verge of death so it's going into the mind under stressful circumstances as opposed to going in there under free and, and chosen circumstances yeah and and there's definitely some some of the newer members the, the lower tier members of the cult who are mm-hmm. definitely like shaken like the, you know some of them who probably stopped helping in the mine very early on. It was like, uh, you know what? No, it's cool. I need to do help out here. Now, that said, I don't think any of them shirk helping, but we're yeah. like, going back in there? No. Nah. And it, there's probably going to be some some work that the cult, possibly Jean Paul directly, need to like, okay, hey, no, we like we don't let this bother us. I, I yeah. think is the vibe. Exactly. Um, and, uh, with that, like, and I, and I imagine it kind of comes at the tail end, everybody's here, every, and then you are just hit with that exhaustion. It's like, okay, gonna, gonna nap for like six hours now. Um, yeah. <laughs> call, call the condition. Well, actually, I don't even think it's a condition. I mean, you call whether you actually pass out, right? I mean, yeah, that's true. Actually, like, your call if you actually, like, pass out. Like oh, exhausted, gotcha. just flat out, just like fall out. Yeah. Hmm. He'd pass out somewhere safe. I think um, you'd see him leaning against Sanite and Messi J. Mm-hmm. Clearly yep. not in the mood or uh, in the state to continue any pleasantries with people. 
Right. So. Yeah. I think I think if we want to end the scene there, it would, it would end with um, John Paul having his arms around Sunny Day and Missy J and them helping him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Are they the able to? Are they able to handle him easily enough? Or oh yeah. Like okay. the, the yeah, two mean, of them, oh, they're super strong. No, yeah. I, I, One I, of them could handle him. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> that's right. I, I, I mean, let, let's let's be honest. We're we're talking about some some badass black women. So I definitely mm-hmm. have. Uh, oh my god! And then the name just disappears out of my head. Uh, Duro Okoye and the. Um, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it the Dora? Yeah, the Dora Milaje. Milaje. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, like these are these are. Like put weapons in their hand and they're badass warriors. Like, you know, uh, f- the physical fitness goes along with right you know, all the all the mental stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah. and so yeah, I think th- with that, um, there's definitely uh, a little bit of a split of of people. Um, some of the maroons probably go with Jean Paul back to the barracks, and it's like like Warder and Wright, um, not even like sounding gracious. He's just like we're, we're shutting down work on the mines. We're just gonna let whatever tremor is going through. We're, you know, everybody go rest. Uh, you know, uh, you know, more or less pays on me kind of vibe. Uh, and we're just not touching the mines for a day or two until we get some. You know, you know. Well, actually, possibly don't. This is probably the first real like um, collapse that the Maroons have had to deal mm-hmm. with. There's definitely yeah. some training and talk that you've had with the other shift leaders uh, about like, hey, these are, you know, this is your emergency preparedness drills kind of thing. Uh, stop, drop, and roll. Uh, and all those kind of like real basic stuff. Uh, but this is the first one you've dealt with and uh, definitely know that you'll probably work with the, the shift leaders tomorrow, or at least some of, uh, some of them will to go and inspect both that mine and yours. Be like, yeah. is there anything you know that's going on. Uh, so yeah, you head you head back that way. Uh, Isabel uh, finishes up with Arthur, uh, who you know definitely looks like yeah he's going to be bed rest for a while. Uh, I imagine but, Mortimer shows up to the same place. Uh, yeah, right? uh, they were doing like surgery on this right. guy. Okay. Mortimer's got an arm that you know. There's a lot of different folks, you know, the frontier medicine sure. thing of, Got okay, it. we're going to split this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if, if you definitely want to find him to have seen with him, we can definitely do that. Uh, but yeah, because at this point, there's the people who are necessary for the medical stuff, which a lot of people are like, I mm, no, I'm good uh, and are bailing out. That would be me. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, manual labor. Absolutely. Body stuff. No, nah, thanks. <laughs> um uh, so yeah, if we want to catch up there, we can. Uh, but real quick, uh, where is Theo? And uh, I imagine at this point, Gisela is probably getting up uh, to that hill, uh, more or less, uh, around about this time as things are kind of settling down here at the mines. I want to go inside. So I guess I want to wait for people to clear out some. Yeah, will they try to stop me? They try to go in. Will, yeah. yeah. And then what about Theo? Um, I'm, I wanted to get inside too, but I wanted to make sure no one saw me go inside. So I mm-hmm. like make like I'm heading home, but then you know say goodbye to Catherine and circle back and say I need to check on something. Okay. Um, for for narrative sake, um, I think we have Gisela and Theo kind of lock eyes away from the mine a little bit as everybody else is kind of going away and you kind of look at each other and kind of make a, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I think we can pick up right there. Um, glances at the entrance to make sure nobody's there. We're alone. There's definitely some folks who are doing a little bit of like clean up and checking up on some things. Yeah, uh, but they're not like just within your shot or whatever? Oh yeah, not within your shot. Um, so Theo will just come on and say this was no accident. I don't think so either. I, no, I, I talked to my dad about because he was right there at the collapse. I, yeah, I I know that this wasn't an accident. Like I can, I can read the stone. Something caused this. This wasn't a a natural weakness in the shaft. Yeah, 
He said the supports didn't give out. The roof just fell. So I want to go look at it. And as you've well, got a cue. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is an exceptional look for me. Okay. When going in here. Um, uh, uh, instant and in duration for that reach? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, do you have any active spells currently? I don't think so. Is your other uh, exceptional luck probably be... Has it expired? Out? I mean, oh, yeah. you could just get rid of it, you know. It's been more than an hour, for sure. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. so it would have expired. Cool. So, uh, one paradox. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Okay. In five free entries, I was, um... Using a coin, because luck sure and um I was going to try to do the using the air around us again because that seemed useful for this like oh yeah the the wind whipping up and stuff mm-hmm. like that yeah I don't know how stormy it is but sure I, I'm i not gonna make a big deal about plus one Yachtris <laughs> okay oh. damn oh well yep Okay, but yeah, I just want to wait until people have moved away enough yeah, uh, that I can at, sort of sneak in. At this point, like, there are people in the, the exterior mine area, you know, where they bring the, you know, carts of rock and stuff like that. And they've got, you know, sorting benches and all sorts of other stuff that goes on the exterior. Nobody's watching the mines. They don't have anybody guarding them. They definitely don't have big old doors that are locked or anything like that. Uh, so it is going to be like, if you're wanting to get in there without being seen, you definitely have to roll dexterity plus stealth. Uh, I mean, I don't care about being seen. I just don't want to be stopped. Right. And that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of up to you of like, if you just walk in, you know, somebody may try to stop you or you may just be noticed. You're not sure. I know. The- and I bring that up mostly because Craig had mentioned that Theo doesn't want to be seen going in. So. Ooh, damn. The fuck? I'm a ghost. Okay. <laughs> five on five. That's, that's, uh, no, that's, that's not five right four. There. Five on four. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's five on four. Because <laughs> of a ten. Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Okay, uh, that's so that's an good. exceptional success. Um, um, I don't think it necessarily is going to give you any specific condition uh, other than just being invisible. <laughs> um, you be- Actually, I, I imagine, because, like, Gisela looks over to, is anybody over here? Hey, Theo, where did she go? <laughs> and I think you batman uh, Gisela. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just going to try to sort of start milling around with the people in the front. Mm-hmm. And by by m- m- people, I mean like this whole area. There's like two or three people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to try to go in. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you do it. Okay. Nobody. Yeah, nobody stops you. Uh, now, whether or not somebody spa- saw you, me. But uh, yeah. So the two. I mean, I have. A reasonable enough reason to want to see what happened here. Right. So, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the two of you kind of make your way down, and you know, but quickly have to find a lamp uh, nearby. But find one, not really any problem. There's, you know, several, um, and make your way down the mines. Um, I imagine Gisela has probably been into the mines mm-hmm. once or twice. Uh, has Theo been into the mines besides this one little event? Well, I went into the other mine where mm-hmm. Cloak and the Moons work. Right. So I haven't, I wouldn't have been in here necessarily. Right. Well, I mean, because you, you went in here for the, um, to help, you know, the collapse and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And, but and prior that to it. that, no? no? Okay, cool. Yeah. So definitely having to follow Gisela, who, um, while Gisela is not at home down here, has been here a couple times, uh, enough to make your way down to and bypass the wrong, uh, mine shafts and stuff like that to find uh, the collapse. Uh, at this point, you know, most of the dust has kind of settled, uh, but the smell of you know a lot of that dirt and rock has kind of been kicked up and stuff like that. Um, and you guys make your way down to the uh, the collapse. 
Okay. And I'm just going to put on Mage Sight first to see if I notice anything weird. Okay. Uh, and Theo, what do you think? Um, I want to do a, a knowing practice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like kind of modeling it after um, Craftsman's Krasman, Eye. Mm-hmm. But I want to look at the rock and figure out how it broke. Sure, how the like collapse that. happened. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of. I think we've done that a little bit. Well, it's in the Evan Phoenix, actually, kind of um, in the, kind of the like examining a broken thing and figuring out how it mm-hmm. broke. Yeah, kind of the thing with matter. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. So go ahead and roll that up. Um, and real quick, uh, just because I noticed the time, uh, Chris, was there anything specific you wanted to check with, with Mortimer that was quick, or should we? Save it for next time. Um, we how about a mm, a little tease of her finding time to just like sit down next to him, and just this sort of there are an awful lot of interesting things happening since you arrived in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the tavern. Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Mortimer good. was, he was, a, I just want to make sure, because I'm was uh-huh. quite in it. Mortimer was right at the collapse site, right? He was the guy that was buried, wasn't he? No. 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 He was oh, further down in. Young gentleman yeah, there's was. A, oh, so yes, he was trapped. Right yeah. Mortimer got injured, so. Yes, to get it. In the collapse. Uh, yeah. Uh, a, a girl could come up with quite a few songs and stories in just a few days that you've been here. Kind of looking over at you. Uh, there's I guess. The, we'll there's the stick. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely definitely keep that. But that's already my gears. I would say. Um, cool. Uh, and thank you, Craig. Awesome. Yeah, three successes. Uh, yeah, looking over this, um, you are no geologist or engineer, um, but at this point now, you know matter. Uh, specifically, you know this matter, um, and the space that it's fallen from which at this point like there's enough of it um moved by the maroons and stuff like that that like you can see the the section of roof uh ceiling that has collapsed down and you can see this large segment of it from one side of the tunnel to the other you know it's maybe six feet six feet wide and just to clarify what i'm looking at like i was looking for the because it was a tunnel and it was a stable tunnel and then it went through a transition mm-hmm. to not being a stable tunnel. I'm trying to look at that transition. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm with you. See, I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you are looking at this like and trying to understand the the how and the, well, the how you understand. You know, basically there was, you know, a fracture through the basically solid stone and then gravity took over and just pulled everything down. The why though is, is curious and you're not quite sure but then we cut cut over to Gisela uh turning on uh you said your mage site Mm -hmm. cool I want to see fate right absolutely um and for narrative purposes because it's cooler that way um you see a uh trying to not lean too heavily into the minor vibe. Um, Actually, yeah. Uh, You see basically this... vortex um, before you. Uh, uh, Looking it straight on, if this were a video game, it would almost look like a portal. Right, and this swirling vortex that is distorting the the world and the environment around you um you've got light being pulled into it you almost have a a black hole-esque effect Mm -hmm. where you know some of the stuff behind it is kind of being pulled around in front of it if any of you have seen the pictures of the black hole it's like that almost uh just without a big empty center um and it is just this swirling cascade that is drawing things in and distorting it and twisting it up and it looks um uh with with your fate sight it looks upsetting and but in a 
like in a natural sense of just like, well, this thing sucks. Um, and, but you definitely recognize it as similar to the things that you saw during your awakening and some of the other creatures that were there in Arcadia. And it is sitting atop the rubble. Maybe probably like size seven, um, you know, large Big. entity. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think because I don't think you can't talk to Spurtle's skin. You can. They're not like uh, ephemerals. Mm. Now one can attempt to study and scrutinize them, um, or summon them. Yeah, I want to. We can't summon them. Not yet. Uh-uh. <clears throat> yeah. Diesel cannot. <laughs> no, I want to scrutinize it, I guess. Like, I want to try to figure out anything about this. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, similar to uh, Aldolf. Isabel. Aldolf. Yeah. Uh, Aldolf. Doing the. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> doing the. Uh, and Isabel's study of that. Uh, Going to have limited amount of time. Uh, or rather, you're gonna have to take some time to think, think and understand it. Think and understand it. I'll get there eventually. Um, but yes, you can definitely start off with uh, Gnosis plus uh, Fate, um, and you can spend willpower on it, obviously, and then mana to give yourself bonus successes. I will go ahead and tell you that the opacity on this thing is three. Well, I have no more willpower, so. <laughs> oh man. Are you? Yes, like, is this actually in it, a supernal that she's seeing? Mm-hmm. So yeah. is it pinging off of our mage site at all? Or no, no, remember, uh, no supernal passing? beings yeah, okay. are always around. Mm-hmm. And when you turn on your active mage site, you're seeing them kind of about. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. one success. Can I spend two mana to get? Uh, technically, yes. The, uh, and I'll let you go ahead and do it now. Technically, you're supposed to put the mana up front before you roll kind of betting with it but i'm fine with you doing it now okay. uh to make that three so yeah you're down to opacity two uh, and you'll have to you come can, back you can only tomorrow. spend mana mm-hmm. equal to your per turn mana spin to limit uh, what is that even on the uh focus page light? which i mean yes. it would make sense but <clears throat> yeah i mean yeah. we're kind of ruling that it takes longer to study right right Anyways, um, so. I think we, yeah, I think due to, uh, cause I was definitely going into this with the idea of you can totally spend, uh, additional mana, um, just basically making the scrutiny roll take longer than a, was it one turn, um, releasing about blah, 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 each point spent adds. It's like you can, you can spend extra turns to cast a spell that has the That's kind of what I'm leaning into. Yeah. 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 But it's yeah, like, I think this die, you're like. Dropping die onto a slide to bring out the room. To stain it. Right? Mm-hmm. Or you drop one yep. die. Mm-hmm. One drop, I mean. Yeah, it takes yep. a while. Yeah. It takes a while for it to come yep. out. I appreciate yeah, the analogy. I, I definitely did it that. sense to me. Yeah, and thank you for reminding me about that, because I definitely, what I was like, oh yeah, we're going to homebrew this. Oh yes, the Mando thing would be an important aspect. Uh, so yeah. Um, but yeah, that does uh, reduce the, um, the scrutiny on or excuse me, the opacity on this supernal being uh, down to two for you, because uh, it is per person. Uh, though, not that it matters, nobody else could see no it. No one else it, can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will give you, uh, from your first scrutiny roll, uh, you already know, but yeah, this is a supernal being, this is a Moiré, uh, so it's tied to fate. Um, and, but that's, that's all you get initially. Um, but it is confirmation, especially after... Not today. Yesterday, seeing spirits for the first time and seeing this thing, which is not spirits, but certainly is certainly different. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, I also have my eye for the strange merit, which mm-hmm. I wanted to use to sort of, because that will also let me investigate if it's not magic. Correct. Mm-hmm. What yeah. happened here? Just trying to find it. It's in Sons of Sorcery, I think. No, Eye for the Strange is actually a like core book. God machine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have it. I've seen it somewhere in one of these books I have. Yep, it's in the blue book. Uh, but. I'm find the actual text. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, leaning into that. Uh, intelligence plus composure. Yes. Uh, and then... Uh, but yes, for uh, Craig, and because Theo's not speaking with Gisela just yet, you're looking at this, and everything probably upsets you, because there's no reason this should have happened. Uh, but, a, but a transition happened, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but I'm not picking up any supernal... Like, is there... Is there no resid- like anything I can look at with Mage Sight to see what transpired? Do you turn on Mage Sight? I will turn on Mage Sight. Which Mage Sights are you turning on? I am turning on Matter and Death, because they're both free. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I mean, Death is just a reflex for her when she's activating Mage Sight. I mean, sight, I, guess, so. I yep. guess you could yeah. voluntarily not turn on one of your ruling, but the ruling come on automatically. Right, they're, they're free, and you get to decide mm-hmm. which ones. So, uh, But yeah. Uh, I always no, I mean, just isn't it the case that both come on? I've never heard of anybody choosing not to turn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, because you can turn one Me- on mechanically. Why wouldn't you? But you can turn on one mage sight mm-hmm. if you're only caring about like, matter. Only there was about death right now. a couple times where Slumber turned on only life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, yeah, okay. and, and, and yeah, definitely not necessarily something you have to do. And yes, uh, looking over this, uh, Eye for the Strange confirms. Yeah, there's something magical, doohickey, funky here. Um, I think specifically for her, um, like there's talking to dad, looking around. There's no like the the few times that they've actually bought dynamite to use it in the mine. Um, doesn't smell anything like that. There's none of the there's no burn. There's no soot. It looks like the rock just fucking fell and. That's not how this works. Uh, meanwhile, you know, Theo next to you is grumbling under her breath, I would imagine, or something similar. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, there's no reason for it to have done no this. No reason for this to have it's done It's frustrating this. that you can't capture that transition because it's all about transitions for her, right? Right, so, like, I mean, the transition was it, it fell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right, but something caused that what transition What started to it? What kicked it, was it a, off? A fulcrum, uh, something happened. Yeah, and she can't piece together so it's a little frustrating she's grumbling a little bit absolutely uh and yeah turning on uh mage site and let me jump over to make sure i have the right stuff for matter mage site um uh very quickly i will mention death nothing hinky going on there Mm -hmm. uh matter stuff uh yeah structure durability uh anything that you you know uh look at the quick little look over at like support beams that are next to you and crawling through the tunnel a little bit and finding support beams on the other side and stuff like that. This stuff was all fine. Uh, now, uh, you know, the only the only thing that you could possibly do is like, okay, well, what did it look like before now? Um, you know, and, and you know, were, were, was the mine missing a support beam that should have been here? Uh, but with with no expertise in mining or anything like that, you wouldn't necessarily know. But yeah, turning on the matter site and looking at all the rocks, like at this point, you know, you just have their durability and structure and stuff like that. But all of this stuff looks like normal rock. Uh, uh, looking up at the the space in the roof, this is all fine. Like. All of, and yeah, very, very, like, let's lean into the mage thing here. This is frustrating as hell. You have the how, the the what, the where, the when, everything, but why? What caused this? What started it? What started the transition? You just do not okay. get. Hmm. I want to look at it. Like, I want to see the collapse like with post-cognition mm-hmm. absolutely there we go <laughs> and do it. Uh, yep do you have that one yes time one time one the time I, one yeah yeah time post-cognition yeah. is dumb now that said because well, now, she doesn't I mean, have- knowing this what? this is it's got to be unchanged right without time two correct mm-hmm. Yeah, which is, and we're going to get into that because of the like. This is this is this is a newbie mage finding out about temporal sympathy. But yeah, mm. exactly that. Um, yeah, so uh, 
And you know, for those at home, and just to remind Ash as well, because you do not have time to, you cannot go to um, when this place was different. Uh, you can only see this tunnel while it was collapsed in its current form. To go farther back or to a different time, you have to get to a different temporal sympathy. Uh, uh, that I think is exactly what it mentions in... Uh, I mean, it's mm -hmm. not a different form. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to, to give you an example, within the temporal sympathy, um, page 186, um, so a unchanged thing, which is what you are limited to currently, is a sealed room left untouched, a diamond in the same setting, just a minor change, of uh, just that one step down, has not significantly changed. A person days later uh, who hasn't changed physically or hours after an injury, a street after an hour of foot traffic, uh, or buildings after days of, inhabita of habitation, a gun that has been fired. So even that minor change. So basically, you, you can still go back, but you will basically, the, the earliest you can go back is when it started to collapse. So you won't have any time before that. That's fine. Right. I want to see if I can see anything. Absolutely. That's up with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is going to be in that like arcane beat. Throw it into the bucket. Hey, whoa! I couldn't see farther back. Why? Why couldn't I? As Giza's gonna learn about temporal sympathy. It's cool. I mean, she's probably not. Well, I I mean specifically because like for. I would imagine for her, she would try to go like what happened before it collapsed and she'll literally just find this wall of like, and then the rocks were falling is where she'll basically start at the earliest is what I mean. For Yantra, can I use one of the rocks? Absolutely. Love sacraments. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, it's a sympathetic Yantra. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Like, yeah, I yeah. want to see the, the past of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, which would be a plus two, by the way, because it'll yeah. be a part of it. <laughs> and I have overreaching, so. All right, I will throw a die at it. Nothing happens. Yeah, one, success. one success. Awesome. Uh, My reaches were for instant and duration. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, um, throwing back to. You know, because you can just pick the because of advanced duration, you have an hour um, and then you can pick, OK, the moment of the collapse. Um, mm -hmm. Now, no, uh, no reach for the scrolling. So you basically just watch this. Yeah, in I can time. only yeah, see what's here. And I want to look at it with Mage Sight up. Okay, because so, I'm curious about that. Um, can I not do that? That that is one of those definite like we house ruled it way back before. We are yeah, definitely we... not definitely not doing it here because boy does that break some shit. Um, so yeah, you're able to watch it just with mundane eyes, as if you were standing there, not able to use uh, mage sight or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, um, zipping back to the basically the moment of the collapse and you have the first rocks falling um and they fall towards you um and you have that moment to because like i said no slowing it down no pausing it can kind of look over to your left uh you can see your father who's you know looking down the tunnel quick over to your right um you can see uh oh my gosh what is mortimer doing right um you can see him speaking with that other miner. And watch his rocks fall and like, you know, sidestep over here a little bit so you can watch over towards him and see what he's doing. And he goes from talking with the miner to watching as the collapse starts to happen and you just watch his face fall. It's just like, oh my God, this is really happening. The other miner panicking. He looks as surprised as anyone else. Hmm. Okay, cool. Kind of continues to pile up around you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Hey, I... Hey, Glancy, are you, are you getting all I can get here? 
And yeah, I mean, for, for the time respond. being, she's not even hearing you. <laughs> but well, and I don't know that, so I right. just. I mean, you basically seen me standing there, staring up at the ceiling, holding a rock, and then just sort of not responding to you. Okay. For like several minutes. Mm-hmm. Like I've been pacing around looking at things, picked up a rock and stopped and looked up and I'm just standing there. I'll hang out just to make sure nobody bothers you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and you play through uh, to the collapse and, you know, actually with, with the hour, you actually have enough time if you wanted to watch the whole rescue. Uh, but that would require standing there for an hour. Yeah, and I don't think that that's going to help me much. Um, anyway. While I'm waiting, is there any, are there any ghosts in the mine? Anyone died here? Um, Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to say, no, there are no ghosts okay. here. Um, but you do know people have died in the mines. There's okay. been a couple accidents and stuff like that. That's fine. Yeah, so I'll just wait for Gisela to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, and I'm going to snap out of it and just sort of blink and look back at you. You were pretty zoned out there for a minute. A few minutes. I was watching what happened. Um, I don't think Mortimer did it. He seems surprised it happened. I don't know what did it, but I have a theory. What is it? What's your theory? When you look at things with your sight, do you see creatures? Sometimes, um, like ghosts and stuff. Not and, ghosts. And you've definitely <laughs> seen some supernal beings. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like big. You mean the, yeah, the other things. Okay. Not, yeah. not humans. Yes. My speech. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, just the 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 things. The <laughs> so supernal people, I mean, I don't see ghosts or anything. Being sort of yeah. Big capital letters and curly cues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've seen stuff like that. There's one of them right there. I'm just pointing directly at it. It's um, But I didn't fate. see anything. When I it's looked, fate. Right? Correct. So she can see something that I can't. Correct. Mm -hmm. Just mark that down. Correct. I, I, I didn't... You can see that, but I, I didn't see anything. I mean, we see things differently. Uh, can you talk to it if you can see it? They've never responded to me before. I mean, I'll, I'll try to talk to it. Sure. Just walk up and sort of waving in front of it. and Yeah, because, I mean, like, your hand can move through it. Yeah, there's... Yeah. Sort of in high speech. Hello. Yeah, I think I think there may be like when you do that, there's this slight shift to the whole thing and then nothing. Yeah, no, it they don't answer, right? Do they talk to you? Um, no. Yeah, the, uh, but the, I've never tried. Yeah, the ones Theo sees are scary. Well, the matter one's less so, but the there's a bunch of these entities of death. <laughs> This is, uh, uh it's frustrating because I can, I can see the transition from it happening where it's a solid cavern to falling apart, but I have no idea. Like, I can't, I can't dig into it to find out what caused that transition to happen. I don't know if it was, I mean, I think this thing might have done it. And I don't know that you would see it because you can't see it. Uh, oh, I should just because now my brain is catching up with stuff. You could scrutinize anything. So the mystery of why did this collapse is something you could scrutinize with matter. 
Now, how difficult mm -hmm. that is and what you get out of it is going to be kind of, you know, within that scope of matter. But that is a thing. Um, I, I find we often kind of accidentally focus in on beings and spells and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But anything can be a mystery that you could investigate with when you with were, your focus mate check. Like, I felt you doing something when you were... What were you doing before you were in your trance? I was looking at the past. No, before that, I think you. No, before that. What were you doing before that? Like, I felt you doing something. You were throwing... Oh, I was... trying to... get a better look at the... the thing. The being. Okay. Yeah, mechanically, just, or excuse me, narratively, pushing mana at it. Yeah, right? narratively, I'm like just trying to see it, focus, poke and prod. <laughs> focus. Yeah. All right. Just. Um. Now just that try to see. The transition I'm trying to get at is that something I can scrutinize? Anything can be a so, mystery that you can scrutinize. Now, that said, there may be stuff where I'm like, it's opacity zero, like, you've got nothing here, or, like, because you're looking at a, you know, death thing, and you're trying to use yeah. matter, you know. So, and I don't think that Theo's ever done this before, so... Hell yeah! No, I like that. Give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, Gnosis plus, uh, what are you gonna do? Matter or death? Matter. Sure. Because <laughs> uh, this is not a living thing, so right. there's no death around it, really. So, um, And then are you going to spend mana? Uh, so we'll do this this one the right way. You're going to spend mana up front to try and blow through further opacity. Sure. What's the opacity? Uh, uh, yeah, because... I don't know what opacity, but I knew, I knew that uh, Giza did something with mana. Mm -hmm. I don't know right. that Theo would necessarily have a vocabulary to describe that, but... Yeah, in my head, what I was doing was just like looking at it very hard. Just, just like so, focus squint. and mm. press. Yeah. So I got Dramatic uh, failure. zero successes <laughs> and I spent two <laughs> mana. Okay. And Dramatic failure? <laughs> fuck it all up with your Nimbus? Yeah, I was to say, as, as, as Chris yeah. said, do you want to take a dramatic or? So having never done this before, I think I will take a dramatic failure. Cool. Uh, which these aren't too bad. Uh, dramatic failures on scrutiny. Um, you accrue no successes. Add two to the mysteries uh, opacity, which is now a six. Great. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Me and my one arcana. Two dice. Yep. Uh, if the player's already made number of rolls equal to the unmodified ace, supernal entity of the mage's uh, path takes note of the mage and may affect him with its powers as long as he maintains his mage sight. Uh, but you have not done that. Okay. Good. But that is the, like, dude, stop messing up mysteries. <laughs> The supernal comes and makes you stop. Yes. That's right. That's a big whack. <laughs> I was going to say, so when you're studying the supernal, they can also, that's like the only time they can affect you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good yeah, time. You're trying to get in real quick. Them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong here, but I'm not getting anything. Yeah. Listen, I, I'm, I, I was just, uh, if, are you done here, do you think? or? I think. I've seen all I can see here. Yeah, I'm not learning anything other. I was going to check on uh, Mishu Sure. Cool. Okay. I think You're right. Getting back to your house on your own. Yeah. Okay. And I think that is a good spot for us to to leave off as uh, Isabel, you know, slides a mug over to Mortimer. Uh, <laughs> sits down. So let's talk, buddy. And, Cloak so is, you, you, know, know. you give him the stick, now offer him the carrot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> John Paul is, you know, laid out on a on a bed, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Gisela is heading home and they will off to go meet up with Mr. Broussard. Um, God damn it, Noctul. Uh, damn it. Uh, I'd say it's a cliffhanger, but it's more, but of, it's a more of a plot, plot hole. hole. <laughs> <laughs> no plot holes here. Uh, I know exactly what I'm doing. 
10 uh, points to not cool. So, thank you all for joining us. Um, it, it This was a wacky episode. We had a wild, different start, and we were missing a Craig. And so we're just all out unbalanced. We didn't have a we didn't have a Moros. Can you imagine playing playing a mage game without a Moros? I mean, I love my Mastigos, but you gotta you have have your grounding, you know. <laughs> Excuse you, uh, so uh, again thank you for joining us um, as always yeah, we invite you to come join us on discord that's www.yeetintu.space come hang out talk about this episode other episodes talk about your games ask us questions about mage or honestly any other TTRPG at this point I think we have enough nerds that if you've played the TTRPG somebody else has too and we can we can figure out the rules with you. We've hit, uh, we have we've hit a critical mass. Hmm? We've hit a critical mass. Yes, we have <laughs> nerd mass. Um, so yes, definitely come by, hang out uh, with us. And it is totally okay to join and lurk. You will be greeted when you come in. It's okay to just be like, hi, I'm just here to lurk and just disappear into the background. Totally cool. Uh, we want you to come and enjoy. If nothing else, come for the bird and burb and dog and so many different little animals it's it's Cute good stuff animal picks. um talk about food it's it's cool to just not be super nerdy it's you're totally allowed um if you want to support us monetarily that's patreon.com slash occultist anonymous or stay club um and uh there's some different little perks there you can read about uh you could also support us uh on twitch with uh your twitch prime sub or just a regular old sub or anything like that it currently doesn't get you anything except the coolest emoji that we've come up with so far um we got that that pride mage skull and later we'll get the little brain spider wave um and uh you know there's some other stuff you can uh if you want to support us buy books on drive through rpg and use our affiliate link buy merch um yeah there's all sorts of stuff but honestly just come by hang out we We'd love to see you. We'd love to have you in Twitch chat if you're there. If you're coming on YouTube, YouTube comments are great and the algorithm likes them, but come by Discord and come yammer at us about the latest episode and stuff like that. Um, that That's all I got. Thank you all for joining us. Wear masks. Get vaccinated. See you later. Yeah, got mine. Let me back to the sticker. Way to go, Chris. Bye, guys. <laughs>